start putting this back together now so you've got a rough idea of what's going on. So the order you see here is the order in which we'll put it in to the housing. So first you've got this perforated washer which we drop down the middle here. Okay, down the end. Then, and we'll slide it into the end of the housing. Now, I like to keep this little hole at the top to where the reservoirs go, those cups. That way we can let the air purge out of the system. So I'm going to try and push these past that primary seal, primary groove here. So I'm going to have to turn you off and do it with both hands. Back same. Okay, so I've got it in there. Just slid it in by hand a bit and push it all the way down the screwdriver. And as you look through the top where the reservoirs go, you will see it slide through, including the spring. So there we go. Done. I've turned it upside down and we're going to put in this bolt with the copper washer now and if I push the screwdriver in the end here onto the piston we need to put that bolt in when you see that wall there see that pass because that bolt stops the spring and piston from coming out too far during assembly it also stops it at the correct distance so you can use these little valves which open that piston pushes against that valve and opens it up when your brakes are in the depressed position and allows fluid to drain from the cup down into the cylinder. All right, further explanation of this little valve here. You'll see the ribbon there. That's for the piston that I was talking about before. That's now set in position by the nut or bolt underneath and that stops the piston from coming out or going any further forward than you can see there. So now it can only go back that way when you apply the brakes. And this guy here, the little valve, sits on this side down in there. And when it's screwed in it means it sits like that until that piston moves back and it shuts the valve off and allows the pressure to build in the cylinder. And you can apply the brakes. If you get this around the wrong way, your brakes won't work. And as you apply the brakes, if you get this pin on the wrong side, if you put, get the pin on that side, when you put the brakes on, you'll try and chop this off and do damage to the cylinder in there and the housing. The wee valve's now fitted and you'll know it's fitted correctly because a little tail on it will be pointing to the back here. I'll show you what I mean when we push the piston in a little bit. When we put the brakes on that will align up in the middle and shut the fluid reservoir off to the brakes and allow the brake master to pressurise. Alright, now for the final piston. So spring, this is a lightweight spring, the heavier one goes down the end here in front of the first piston. So drop that into there, so that's sitting there nicely aligned. And now we've got to drop this guy in. A little bit of rubber grease on there. Now this is the tricky bit. I have to force or get that gas that um, seal. If you come in the right position, that seal past that lip. As you can see, it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze. So because I don't have eight hands, I'm going to have to turn this off, and you'll have to come back. By some miracle, we've now got the final piston in, and you'll see there's a circlet in there, which holds it in. So we push that down, the circlet stops the piston coming out. 
and if we have a look down here this is where the little valve goes same as this one and we're going to locate the little pin on the right hand side of the screen so the pin has to go down on that side okay the front valve is now fitted so if we push on the front piston valve is currently on an angle so it allows fluid to drain into the re um, from the reservoir into the piston and that's when I push the piston in the piston in shuts the valve and don't panic if you push the front piston in and the back one doesn't cycle that's because there's a spring between the two and until this is all full of brake fluid it's not going to work so we'll get the cups on now, um, fit the brass washers and no rings in here. Okay, fluid cups, these guys, how do they work? Well, there is an O-ring which sits on top of the little valve here. And then that O-ring will actually sit into when you put the cup on the top. Take that O-ring off and drop it on the floor and all the rubbish. Good one. Okay. That O-ring actually sits in here and is compressed in here between that surface and this surface here. And then we have a brass, sorry, copper washer which sits down in here and the nut screws down over the top which is this guy here. Done. So I'll throw it together. Cups on. I've just dropped the copper washer over. And the best way to do it is actually put the copper washer on the top of the screwdriver here, drop a screwdriver down into there, and then just let the copper washer go and it'll land on the target, not in the dish, and you're flipping it around trying to get it on top. And you can do the same with the nut which I shall demonstrate now with one hand. There we go. Done. Now we just screw it up. Something to be aware of, and I've made a mistake in the past, that nut in the cup does not need to be tight because all you're doing is just compressing on that O-ring. And that O-ring will bottom out O-ring won't be allowed to bottom out because there's actually a raised lip up the top here which only allows a certain amount of compression set on the O-ring. So when you're using something like that to do it up, which is overkill because I've got a 32mm socket on there, don't do it up too tight because you will do some damage. Now in this old girl we've got two types of filters. There is the filter which clips over the top of the nut down there, which I can't get on at the moment. I'll come back to that. That sits in there like that, so that filters the rubbish out before it gets into the cylinder. Then we've got another type of filter, which is this. It's the same thing, but this one sits in the top of the cup like that and filters the rubbish out that you tap into tip in or drop in while checking it. The little filter's attached. Does wobble around a bit, but probably good enough to keep the rubbish out. So that's one cup on. Okay, second cup is the same as the first cup fitting it. It's slightly different. The only difference is the nut. That's it. So I won't need to show you doing this because you've already seen how I've done it. Alright, thanks for watching folks. That's the brake master done. I'll put up another video of the air cylinder part on the front here so I'm going to go haul that out now and open it up because I've had brake fluid leaking out the front here it'll leak into the air cylinder master brake fluid attracts moisture and it will potentially rust the pores out so we're going to open it up and clean it out and re-oil it so stay tuned for that see ya